So I watched the Owen Hart Dark Side of the Ring documentary. Uh, Dark Side of the Ring, of course, has been producing the sort of you know, interesting documentaries about the dark side of the wrestling business. And I've covered a couple of them in here on World of Geekdom. If there's any episode that you think I should review or that you think you'd be interested in, let me know in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to give you my thoughts on it. This was the season two finale covering the death of Owen Hart. And um, it was, you know, alongside the Chris Benoit one, the most tragic one uh, of this entire series. You know, Dino Bravo was, was pretty hard too because... You know, what they do with these documentaries, they they talk to the families uh, of the deceased. And, like, you know, you, you had Dino Bravo's, like, daughter and wife. And it was kind of the same thing here with Owen Hart's family. The story really was uh, more so the perspective of Martha Hart. So uh, it was definitely, from her perspective, not WWE's, what happened with Owen's death. You know, when it comes to the death of Owen Hart, I remember this day very well. In fact... I still have the original Over the Edge pay-per-view on VHS tape that I recorded the night it happened. I have my original VHS from that very same day in my closet. It's here in my home. Because if you go to the WWE Network, you're not going to get the pay-per-view version at all. What, what happens with the network version is it says it has a picture of Owen. And it says this is the night that Owen Hart passed away, you know. But when you actually watch the show, they edit out any mention of Owen. Um, when the pay-per-view was put to a halt and JR's talking to the camera, and then later on when JR um, says that, you know, Owen Hart died, which was on this documentary, that's been cut from the pay-per-view or from the uh, WWE Network version. Same thing with uh, Jeff Jarrett's promo uh, when he was crying and Deborah's, You know, all of that was cut from this documentary. or I'm sorry, from the WWE Network. But it's in this documentary, a lot of it, and on the original pay-per-view version. You know, that whole night was surreal because, like, this man literally fell from the top of the building of the Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri, and died in the middle of the ring. You know, now, there's been reports that he actually didn't die in the ring, that he was still alive, and that he died on the way to the hospital or in the hospital. You know, there's different sort of ways to perceive it, but... You know, the cause of death was right there in the ring. There was blood in the ring. And, you know, they this documentary or this, you know, TV special, whatever you want to call it, kind of goes into, you know, they interviewed Jimmy Corderas, who was the referee in the ring at the time. And he talks about what he saw. Jim Ross is on it. He talks about how he was right there in the front and witnessed, like, the, the, he, the way that Jim Ross describes, like, the noise of Owen's body hitting the canvas and just being told by Kevin Dunn, the director, hey, uh, in 10 seconds you have to tell him Owen's dead and because he, he didn't know later on in the pay-per-view. And Jim Ross being the guy who had to tell the world, the wrestling world, that Owen Hart had died um, is surreal. And he had to say over and over again, this is not a wrestling storyline, this is not entertainment, which... You know, they never did that kind of stuff back then. I mean, there was work shoots, but this was actually a, a real situation. And they sort of go through, like, how unnecessary all of this was. You know, the entire thing was that Owen was playing the Blue Blazer and that he was supposed to come down from the heavens, um, you know, I, very co ironically in a negative way, come down and have this superhero entrance, right, as he, he was about to face Godfather for the Intercontinental title. Well, the problem is that it was a low-card act. It wasn't a main event act. There was no need to do it. Um, Owen didn't really need this. And according to the documentary, you know, Owen didn't really want to do it. You know, the story from Vince Russo's perspective, who was not on this documentary, is that he did ask Owen several times and that Owen said yes. But when you go further in depth, the entire reason why he said yes is because you know, according to what many, I, I didn't know Owen, obviously, but it's because Owen felt like he had been saying no too many times to other storylines. For example, uh, WWF wanted Owen to have a storyline where he had like a puppy love crush on Deborah McMichael, and he felt very uncomfortable doing that storyline because he loved his wife, and even though it's all fake and imaginary, he didn't want to play a storyline in 99 when he's on TV and his kids are watching him have this weird crush on this lady who's not his, who's not their mom. You know, it all kind of makes sense. Owen Hart just didn't want to do it. And so because of that, Owen felt like, okay, I didn't want to be the guy who always says no. And so he went ahead and did it. And he probably felt somewhat enthusiastic about it at first. But, you know, JR talks about how Owen didn't like heights. And, you know, the whole first half of this kind of tells you the story of Owen's life and it kind of zips through a lot because the whole purpose of it is more so the tragedy. But 
Owen Hart was an unbelievable wrestler. I recently have been re-watching uh, in the past year or so Owen from like 93 to 97, like his entire run with his brother. And, you know, he, I forgot how incredible he is and how funny he is. And there's all these stories about Owen pranks and that Brett's told. And the dude, according to many, was was a legit good guy and a really funny guy and a great guy to be around. And so they do this stunt where he's supposed to fall down and have this sort of uh, come down from the, from this from the top of the building in this like superhero entrance, but the the rig snaps and and loosens and Owen falls to his death. And unfortunately, because of this, you know they could never really figure out what happened. But they did actually, and this blew my mind. So in the documentary, Martha Hart whips out the latch that was holding Owen up and this thing was tiny. Remember, Owen was a 227 pound wrestler. His son called him 240 pounds, but I'm pretty sure he was 227. Um, that was what he was billed as anyways. Maybe he was 240. I mean, that is his dad. So he was coming down and it was a little latch and if you just put a little bit of pressure on it, it snaps and it lets go. It's for sailboats. And supposedly the rigging company, from what other people have said, is the same one that did Sting's entrances in WCW. But, uh, I guess the person who actually did this was just inexperienced, according to what Martha said. Um, and because of that, it was just, it was very negligent. That's the word that was used, negligent, because it wasn't really something that was necessary for Owen's character. And also the fact that he falls and then the show continues. You know, I want to talk about that here in a minute. I'm going to give my thoughts on that here in just a moment. But I want to first say that, you know, I remember when this happened. And a few of my friends stopped watching wrestling afterward for a little while. And I remember Raw is Owen the next night, you know, when the whole, all storylines were canceled and every match was a tribute to Owen Hart. And I just remember, you know, how surreal it all was. You know, this man literally died and there were people in the building, in Kemper Arena, 18,000 people or so, who witnessed this man dying. Some of them children. You imagine being a little kid going to a wrestling show. I want to see Stone Cold. I want to see The Rock, you know, Mick Foley. I want to see The Undertaker. And you're seeing a guy die. Like, can you imagine the trauma? And what's crazy is there were stories that people who went to the show didn't even know he died. They were There was a story that I remember hearing that people were driving home after the show, turned on the radio and heard that Owen died. Didn't even, because they didn't announce it to the audience, they, like to the crowd. They announced it to the people at home watching the pay-per-view, not the live audience. And that just like blew my mind just because I've been to so many wrestling shows. Can you imagine being a spectator at a sporting event, real or fake, and you witness a person actually legitimately dying? I mean, and you know if it's on the radio, it's real. So, I mean, it just, it, it, it's been 21 years and it, it hit me. I mean, it really hit me. And then watching, you know, watching and listening to Martha and Jim Ross talk about this and and his and Owen's son, it did get me a little bit emotional. I really did because, you know, I didn't know Owen Hart. Obviously, I don't know the guy. I don't really, I don't usually cry over celebrities. I'm not that kind of guy. Um, but this was so unfair to that family, you know. But I also don't vilify Vince McMahon. I really tried to vilify him because I genuinely believe in my heart that Vince never wanted this to happen. I don't think Vince ever had any ill will towards Owen. I don't, I, yes, it was negligent. They should have taken more care of their their talent. And they never did a stunt like this ever again. Like, they never did this ever again. But um, not WWF. So they learned their lesson. But, uh, you know, I, I feel for the family more than anything. You know, the story that Vince was the one to actually call Martha... And, okay, you're going to get a call later on. Then the doctor called her. And the way that she described the doctor who was like, he didn't even want to tell her he died. He was like, oh, I did the best I could to save him. Like She's like, just just what's going on? Like, oh, it's mind-blowing. So the second half of the documentary goes into, like, the lawsuit. And they show the latch and everything. And the story of the rigging crew. Which, which one point that was made, okay, that I didn't even think about was that when Owen died... And then the show continued. When I was younger, I used to always think, well, they, they, I understand why they did that. They wanted to kind of, you know, try to move on with the show because they weren't really sure if Owen had died at the time and maybe he was going to be okay. And you have, you know, you have an audience there that paid money to see the show. And even though none of that matters if a human being actually dies, it's one of those things where WWF was put in a very bad position. But now when I'm, when I'm watching the documentary, Martha Hart said that, 
well, this could have been a crime. What if somebody pushed Owen? Like, why wasn't there a police investigation right after, right after he fell? And she's right. Any other like story like this, if, if it had been a hot air balloon accident or a helicopter accident or something like that, you would have had cops involved. You would have had an investigation. Here, there was no investigation. The show just kept going. Uh, the pay per view kept going. You know, and that was it. Steve Austin uh, wrestled the Undertaker in the main event for the title. I mean, just it just kept going. Like you know, there were more matches and. WWF has been criticized over this, and honestly, at first I thought it was unfair to them, but now I do think it's fair. But at the same time, you know, you gotta give them. You have to understand this too. Imagine being the owner of this company or an executive and seeing that and not really knowing what to do. Like, what do we do? Do we stop the show? Do we tell the audience? Like, you could say it's a shade that they didn't do that, but at the same time, it's a very hard position to be in because you're not emotionally stable. You're not centered. You're you just found out that a person who you work with, who you who you care about, even if you didn't, if you weren't friends with them, who who you see every day or every day you're at work, die. You're not thinking straight. You know what I mean? You're just not thinking straight. So we have to always remember that and not be so hard on the company when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, but with that being said, you know um, Martha and the pain that she was going through and how. You know, at first when I was younger, I always wanted Owen to get in the Hall of Fame because I thought he deserved it. But the WWE Hall of Fame is a fucking joke now. I mean, it has been for years. Not because of this, but because it's no longer about respecting the talent. It's about, like, you know, having Kurt Angle drink milk. And, like, and I was there for that. And, like, I respect Kurt Angle. And, like, it was almost became a clown show. The clock and everything. You know, this used to be an event that was honoring the legacy of the talent and it's become like a way to sell tickets you know what i mean putting in the nwo and which again i don't disagree with that but it's become more like a party which i'm okay with i'm actually okay with it being a party but it's not what the hall of fame really should be it should be more about honoring the careers of these talents and martha hart does not want owen to go in the hall of fame because if he was going to go hall of fame wwf would uh, wwe would sell tickets to the hall of fame show and they'd make money so they would profit off of Owen's death, and not to mention she doesn't think that he should be honored by the company who was responsible for his death, which to me is a little bit unfair because it was mostly the harness company that did it, that, that, that screwed up, but WWF, it was their idea. I mean, it was, according to Russo, it was Russo's idea because Vince Russo, the, the head writer at the time, you know, called Owen, and, and the Stings people were going to be at Kemper Arena, the 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 harness people, and he thought, what a great idea to have Owen do it. So he's got to be feeling some kind of guilt in his heart because even though he was not the one, he was not responsible directly for Owen dying, he did put Owen in that position. So I know I would have trouble sleeping at night. You know, anybody working for that company would. They interviewed The Godfather and D'Lo Brown, and, and, you know, they were discussing, like D'Lo Brown talks about seeing Owen getting put away in the in the hospital, uh, in the, I'm sorry, in the ambulance and Godfather talking about how, oh, hey, he was blue when I saw him. Just And then the, the what really hit me, what really got me is uh, Martha talks about seeing Owen in his casket during the funeral. And she couldn't even look at him. She turned away and then Brett has to grab her and kind of drag her back over there. You know, um, very powerful stuff. And then the fact that the family, you know, Cornette and, Sin- and Cornette even cries. Even Jim Cornette cried, which is very rare. He insinuates that. Some of the hearts didn't want to go against Vince during the lawsuit when Martha sued them because they were afraid of getting on Vince's bad side, you know, and so it, it tore the family in half because some of the family was not in support of Martha's lawsuit and some were. And, uh, you know, they they lost a brother, a son, a father, everything, a very important person to them. And uh, it's just hard. It's just, it's tragic that that happened. Like, you know, this tore the whole family apart over something so silly as a little stunt for a character that was a comedy character. Like, Owen was a great wrestler, a great talent, but the Blue Blazer character at that time was a comedy undercard gimmick. That's what he was, you know? He was not a main event guy. And I'm not saying it matters, because it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the man died, but it was so unnecessary, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, he didn't have to go down, and if he did, you would think WWF, because WWF is, is great when it comes to production and making sure that their talent is, you know, safety. They've historically been very good at that. You know, Owen Hart, I'm sorry, Shawn Michaels came down from the ceiling at WrestleMania 12. Um, We've seen, uh, uh, you know, different stunts like this in the past. WWE has done stunts with cars and ambulances and all kinds of stuff like that. That's all very well prepared. And, 
you know, professional people. They've done fire stuff where you have professional fire people there. Like, but yet here it's like they, it's like, it's almost like they were negligent. Like they were kind of negligent and they didn't really care that much, you know? And I'm not saying that they didn't because obviously they cared about this man, but it was was almost like, oh, well, you know, before he went up there, they're probably, oh, what's the worst that could happen? You know what I mean? Because even Jim Ross was like, better you than me. Like they didn't think it was going to happen, dude. And you know, thankfully, they don't do that anymore. But this, this, this hit me. This one hit me. Um, it's available on Vice. Um, I did enjoy it. I actually am looking forward to hearing more about this story. But it's just really, it's a tragedy, bro. There's no silver lining and no mystery here. I mean, the dude died unnecessarily, and his family had to suffer for it. You know, um, and they even, like, his daughter, Owen's daughter, was talking about how I hate wrestling now because it took my dad. You know, she hates the entire business because of that. Can you blame her? Can you really blame her? And, you know, Owen's son, Oge, is a lawyer now. She became like a journalist. And so the family's doing okay, but it would have been a lot better if they had their dad. Um, I think so. Owen Hart was a tremendous athlete, a tremendous wrestler, and I grew up with this guy. I grew up, I, because Bret Hart's my favorite wrestler of all time. So I watched the entire Bret Hart, Owen Hart storyline from beginning to end when I was a kid. Like, And I watched it again recently. It just really, really hurts, even though it's been 21 years, that this dude, he was young, bro. He was he was young. He wasn't even 40. Young guy. You know, younger than Kobe. And that one hit hard, too. Anyways, um, that's what I think. Let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, thank you for watching. And... Yeah, I would highly advise to check the documentary. And apparently Martha Hart was also a guest on Chris Jericho's podcast. Uh, I haven't heard that yet, but apparently there's more information there. So I'm going to definitely check that out. But thank you. Hope you have a great day. And uh, take care of yourself, dude, for real. And each other.